CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Welcome, everybody, to the meeting of the Arlington School Committee. Today is Thursday, September 12th, 2024. Uh, I'm trying to be 20 years younger. It is 6.31 p.m., and we're off and running. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is public comment. And uh, for members of the public who wish to address the committee, there will be a 30-minute public comment. If you'd like to sign up to speak, either remotely, Zoom, or in person, you must email ediggins at ediggins at arlington.k12.ma.us by 6 p.m. Thursday, the day of the meeting, depending on how many people sign up, if time allotments may be reduced, but will not exceed three minutes each. If the number of people who sign up exceeds what can be reasonably done in 30 minutes, the number of speakers may be capped or speaking times may be reduced at the discretion of the chair. I don't think we have that problem tonight. All requests to speak uh, received after that date and time included will be invited to speak at the next regular school committee meeting. Um, noting that uh, uh, topics or discussion shall be limited to those items within the school committee scope and authority. The authority of the school committee primarily concerns the review and approval of the budget, the district's public schools, performance of the superintendent, and the educational goals and policies of the district's public schools. Comments and complaints regarding school personnel, uh, apart from the superintendent or students, are generally prohibited unless they, those comments and complaints concern matters within the scope of school committee authority. Uh, those are our ground rules. Uh, Mr. Demotica, are you online? John, John D., uh, could you, uh, he's raised his hand, so would you uh, bring him forward? And the other note is that we require people <coughs> speaking in public comment to identify by name and street address. John, are you uh, on mute? Uh, I will skip John for now and come back to him. Um, Sorry, I'm not on yeah. mute any longer. Oh, if that's okay. Ready to go. Sorry about that. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, let me get my timer out so we do the three minutes legally. Great. I'd like to share screen, please. Uh, we do not share screens. You can. Please bring it forth on camera, but our policy doesn't provide for um, uh, for sh uh, screen sharing. Okay, so the slide that I've got up, which does look like if I'm looking at your background, it is up, is uh, is not up. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, our policy though um, doesn't permit audio visual presentation. So please uh, identify. Uh, please come forward and and uh, be visible. Yeah, okay, great. I should be visible. I'm on, <clears throat> my camera is on, I'm, so, I'm sorry for the... Uh... Okay, okay. Uh, we may be having trouble pulling up. I, I, I still don't see... Oh, you're just blurry, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't even have my blurry setting on. I'm, I don't know why it's okay. coming through blurry. Oh, look at okay. that, man, upside, upside down, down. how's that? You can live with that. Uh, I'll start the timer now. Please identify yourself, name and street address, and you have three minutes. Sure, I'm John DeModica. I live at 106 Bartlett Ave uh, here in Arlington. So I'm sorry that I'm upside down. Um, <laughs> uh, I, and I would like to uh, come back an, another time to try to show off some slides. I wanted to make our community aware of the materials that the APS is utilizing in the sexual health curriculum across grades four through nine. Um, we parents quietly believe that the APS is working on all fronts to create opportunities for academic excellence in order that our children are afforded every opportunity for an excellent K-12 education and graduate well prepared to take on the challenges of our collective futures. Any casual examination, however, of the evidence playing out across the APS would give parents many reasons to feel this may be an empty claim. Worse, perhaps, the APS is spending great effort <clears throat> deflecting educational programming in lieu of unnecessary, untruthful, and wildly misdirected programming with little remorse or mid-course correction when all of the result vectors demonstrate the devastating impact this has on many of our children, their education, their mental and physical health, especially 
those that jump on the bandwagon of the 5,000% increase in transgender ideation by teenagers nationwide. The visuals that APS is using would be to great effect to this, uh, to this point, and I, I will submit them for the record and hopefully for public viewing as well. This is happening whilst administrators across APS are burying their heads in the sand and demonstrating a complete lack of critical thinking that maybe, just maybe, this is partially aided by the curriculum, such as the sexual health curriculum. I'd like to share just a few of the slides that demonstrate what is being taught in this curriculum. Again, not able to tonight. The APS makes claims that this information presented is both medically accurate and age appropriate. It is in fact, neither. And I would also like to share a video from amaze.org that is utilized to convince children that transgender is just another way of being and it has no medical or health impacts on, on children's future. I request that the APS and the school committee uh, think seriously and think critically about uh, what it's presenting. And I would be pleased to be a part of any discussion um, further to that end. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be Cheryl Miller. Uh, please step forward to the mic. Can I sit here then? Yeah, then? yeah, right. Uh, please identify your name and street address for the record. You have three minutes. My name is Cheryl Miller. I live at 10th Thesda Street. I am an autistic adult and the parent of two special education students in Arlington. I would like to speak about the strategic plan in relation to students with disabilities. My first real introduction to the strategic plan was going to a session run by Dr. Holman a couple of years ago. The values of the strategic plan were what I was hoping to hear and Dr. Holman seemed committed to making real change in the district for the most marginalized students. At that time, I had been forced to homeschool one of my children after she was failed by APS over a period of years due to her disabilities. I wanted her to be able to return to school the following year, but I knew I couldn't do that unless school was going to change, unless the Arlington Public Schools were really going to live up to their values. Listening to and speaking with Dr. Homan that night gave me hope that she was going to stand up for real change. Foolishly, stupidly, I believed that she truly stood for what she was saying. And so I sent my child back to APS the following year and I found that nothing had changed. There was no willingness to make the changes called for by the strategic plan and the equity audit. The result has been deep, lasting damage to my daughter and our entire family. My daughter's case was an opportunity to start making the difficult cultural changes within Arlington Public Schools that are required in order to deliver the goals and values of the strategic plan for students with disabilities. However, Dr. Homan did not take that opportunity, quite the opposite. Dr. Homan was willing to wield the power of the Arlington Public Schools against us to block and prevent any attempted accountability. As soon as we entered the realm of special education, the values of the strategic plan went out the window, replaced by carefully crafted legal sophistries designed not to promote equity and justice, but to deflect responsibility at all costs. In this arena, parents who don't typically have lawyers on call will always have a structural disadvantage. Parents of students with disabilities and parents who are themselves disabled, doubly so. School committee, I am begging you, please hold Dr. Homan accountable for failing to ensure that the values of the strategic plan are enacted for all students, all students. Please hold Dr. Homan accountable for her willingness to allow some of the most vulnerable students to fall through the cracks. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be Brianna Walsh, who's on Zoom. Can we bring Brianna Walsh up, please? Hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah, hold, let me just reset the uh, timer. Uh, we can hear you. Uh, please begin with your name and street address. Hi, my name is Brianna Walsh, and I live at 51 Lachlan Avenue. 
Thank you, school committee, for your efforts for the students of Arlington. I have children who attend Brackett Elementary School. I am anxious about the progression of construction at Brackett Elementary School, coupled with the delay at Robbins Farm Playground. I understand the Brackett Playground construction might be completed before this winter, but it also might get delayed until spring 2025 primarily due to the surface type pour that requires moderate temperatures and weather conditions to set. Despite the best efforts by the Parks and Recreation Department and Parks Commission in managing the construction of Robbins Farm Playground, it seems very likely that the complexity of the project has delayed the timeline and that it won't open until spring 2025. I recommend the facilities department and the facilities subcommittee to assume that the Robbins playground will not open this fall and that it will be delayed until the spring. I urge the facilities department and facilities committee working with Brackett to take every means to accelerate and prioritize the construction of Brackett playground and ensure it can be completed this fall. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else for a public comment? Seeing none, we now conclude public comment. Next up, uh, we do not have any uh, AHS student representatives to the yet. school committee yet. Um, uh, Representing the AEA is their ABLE president, Julie Keyes. Good Hi. evening. Hello. Next up on the agenda is new administrator hires and position changes, Dr. Holman. All right. We have a number of our new leaders with us this evening, and I'm going to ask all of them to introduce themselves in just a moment. But before I do that, I'm going to take this down from the screen <clears> in a second. Um, but I just wanted to name who everybody is, and then I'm going to have everyone introduce themselves. Um, some people are able to be here tonight. Not everybody necessarily is. Uh, we have a new assistant superintendent of finance and operations um, who is here. We'll introduce himself in a second. Directors of social studies and English. Our METCO director um, was in another role for a year, has come back. She'll introduce herself in a moment. Uh, also returning is director of math and computer science. That was interim last year, is now returning and, and in a permanent role. A new principal at two schools, Audison and Hardy, um, new assistant principals at several schools as well, um, and some other folks in new roles that are that we are very excited are going to be supporting the Arlington Public Schools this year. So I'm going to do my best to call on each of you, um, and you two who are live, thanks for coming live, you should come on up and say hello. If you could introduce yourself um, and tell what role you are in, and perhaps one thing that has been exciting to you in your new role so that we can hear you talk a little bit uh, more than just an introduction, it would that would be absolutely fantastic. So why don't we start with our folks who are here live. Um, Christina, Ms. Cooney, you want to get started? Hi, I'm Christina Cooney. I'm the new uh, K-12 Director of English, English Language Arts, um, and there's been a lot that's been really exciting to me. It's been wonderful. I've had a wonderful welcome from um, faculty at all the 10 schools, and I've really enjoyed having the opportunity to be in the buildings and getting to meet um, the different administrators, um, teachers, children, students, um, and so it's been a great um, beginning for me. Great to have you here. Mr. Kozak. Hi, and uh, my name is Michael Kozak. Uh, I am the new director of history and social studies. And uh, a couple things that have been just really exciting to uh, be here and in this role is helping to implement the strategic plan. I think there's been some tremendous work that's been done to bring that to fruition. And it's really exciting to be part of that implementation and uh, just the ways in which uh, that strategic plan is thinking about students, uh, teachers, and learning. Uh, so that's uh, a really wonderful way to start in this role with that kind of vision. Fantastic. It's great to have you both here. We have some folks online, too. Ms. Bronner, I know you were in the interim role last year. Do you like to say hello and introduce yourself yeah. again? Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. So Octavia Bronner, Director of Math and Computer Science. Um, so, as Dr. Homan said, I've moved from interim to the permanent role, and one of the things that I've really enjoyed about working in this role 
coming from the classroom in Arlington is being able to work both with teachers and administrators, but also to be able to start to get into the other schools and see what happens outside of high school. What, what's, what's life like for a student in middle school? And then really get in and dig into to what's happening in the elementary school. So it's been really exciting to see that wider lens of what our students are doing and their journey from K through 12. Thank you. And Ms. Smith, I know you're not new as an administrator, but you're back in the MECO role and we're so thrilled to have you. you Want to say hi? Absolutely. So hello, everyone. My name is Rochelle K. Smith because I am named after my mom, so I like to put the K in there. Um, I can say that this has been an exciting start to the school year. So from the hugs, the kids running over to me, to being able to greet the high schoolers in the morning, the Gibsters, the Trailblazers, I should say, OMS. I've been at um, the different elementary schools and it's just been really exciting to see the smiles on the kids' faces, just to see how excited they are to be back in the classroom, to be in a new grade, starting out, you know, their new journey. And it has been extremely exciting, exciting, exciting to see the growth that they've had over the summer. I can go on and on and I won't, but I am super excited. And I also want to say that I feel a huge sense of belonging. I can walk down the streets in Arlington and I really, really, really feel so connected. So I am happy, thrilled and honored to be back and utilize my skills that I got to, you know, gain as an assistant principal last year in this role as Meckle director. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Smith. Um, and online, last one online, then we're gonna come back to in person. Um, Beth Federico <clears throat> is on. Beth, are you there? Thank you. Beth Hi. is not in an administrative role, but is in a really exciting one-year role as um, EL Implementation Specialist, has been helping Ms. Cooney out a lot with the implementation of the EL rollout. Um, and we're just absolutely thrilled to have this role available for a year so that we can make sure teachers have absolutely everything they need to help the students with this rollout. It's a big lift for our teachers, and so that additional support is very appreciated. So, Ms. Federico, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, too? Hi, I'm Beth Federico. I'm the EL Implementation Specialist, and I've really enjoyed being, to being able to travel around to all seven elementary schools. Usually I've been housed at Stratton, and it's been really exciting to see all of the awesome teaching that's happening in Arlington. Thank you. And um, last but not least on tonight, we have a lot of folks who are not able to join us because of either um, back to school nights, we do our absolute best to make sure those aren't landing on school committee nights, um, but it's not always avoidable, or their own children's back to school nights. We had a lot of people who are at their own kids back to school nights in their home communities also tonight. Um, but uh, Mr. Gorski is going to close us out here with a quick introduction. He's been here as Assistant Superintendent of Finance and Operations since August 1st. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, Fran Gorski, I'm the new Assistant Superintendent of Finance and Operations. Um, it has been a very exciting first six weeks of employment with Arlington, uh, working with the facility folks on the operations side and uh, meeting everyone in the district, meeting the principals. It's a great team here, great teachers, and uh, probably the most exciting thing was closing out FY24, so yes. more on that to come. Indeed. <laughs> All right, and those are the folks who are here to introduce themselves. I know you'll meet everybody else as the year moves forward and we talk about school improvement plans and do other curriculum presentations, but I just want to say this is a really dynamic group of leaders. You're all doing a spectacular job. Um, the beginning of the school year is always a big lift, and it's been wonderful to work with all of them. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, before, uh, quick question. Mr. Cardin. Um, uh, it's sort of a shared department, but is there an acting facility, facilities director? There is. Um, there, a uh, former fire chief. Um, help me. Jefferson. We just Bob said Jefferson. a lot of names. Oh, right. Bob Jefferson is in the role part time, I believe. Thank you. Any other questions or comments under this agenda item? Seeing none, I want to take a brief detour. I should have read this at the beginning of the night to die speed of the meeting of the Arlington School Committee is being conducted via Zoom, being recorded. This is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. As we have a member participating remotely, uh, all votes are required to be conducted by roll call. Persons wishing to join in the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. 
Persons uh, participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others, and then if you wish to participate, you're asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Further, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment, and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Finally, both Zoom participants and people watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials, also found at the town's website using the NOVA agenda platform. And now we go on to the opening events report, Dr. Holman. Okay. Typically, Dr. Ford Walker and I would do, this is the wrong set of slides. Hold on one second. Wrong set of slides still. Too many tabs. Um, typically, Dr. Ford Walker and I would do <clears throat> this report together. Dr. Ford Walker had another commitment this evening. So I'm going to get us started by talking through um, some opening events. And then she will be back next week, next or in two weeks, and we will talk about some of the summer events that happened in summer school and give a report out on that. So I will only be speaking to sort of our opening launch tonight, and we'll have more information about summer programs later. So I'd like to talk about some of our purpose and goals as we opened the school year this year, some of the events that we held, like August Leadership Workshop, New Teacher Orientation, Opening Day, um, and our first few days of school, and share some of the um, initiative work and asks of all of our staff uh, for how we're going to go about that work as we move into year two of the strategic plans implementation. So beginning with purpose and objectives, we had an opening theme for this year. This is a theme that we're hoping to carry through our professional development work through the remainder of the school year. That theme is focused on building connections that will foster growth for staff, students, and systems, thinking about what it is we can do to make sure we're connecting routinely with one another across roles, departments, schools, um, to build those collaborations that are going to allow us to grow and learn so that we can make changes to systems, changes to our own practice that will positively benefit students. So that is sort of our theme for the year, is really focusing on how we're connecting with one another, how we're communicating with one another in ways that allow us to grow and learn. Our opening objectives for the start of the year were to make sure that we were building our resilience through difficult um, challenges. One of the things I said on opening day to staff is that we are in entering year two of an exceptionally challenging and ambitious strategic plan. That means that we're engaging in change that can be difficult, challenging at times. We will encounter disagreement about what our values mean when they are entering our actual actions and practice, and so we need to build our resilience around that. And if we have strong relationships, that will allow us to push through those difficult moments of growth. Um, we want to use our strengths to better understand and work together to address challenges. So I talked a lot about how strength and struggle can be two sides of the same coin, uh, and if we really understand what our strengths are, that can help us to uh, address things that are challenging. So starting with that idea of strength was a, was a part of the message of opening day. We want to build upon what's excellent and share our implementation of excellent practice. I'll share an example of what that looked like at Leadership Workshop in just a minute. And use student-level data to determine our areas of growth for 24-25 and make sure we're focusing our efforts on implementation of our long-term initiatives. So those were our goals as we headed in to these opening events. Um, as we have done for the past three years, we did our August Leadership Workshop as sort of the first event that launched the school year. Our goals were to ensure that we engaged leaders in um, an exercise that would allow them to share a practice that was working well in our school, why it was working well. So each school identified a practice that they wanted to um, share out, and then they went and identified a couple of different things that they wanted to learn more about and then try, bring back to their own context and put into their school improvement plans. So hope, you'll see some evidence of that, I'm sure, when you're looking at school improvement plans, things that one school worked on building and growing and that another school has pulled into what they're implementing and trying to do um, strategically. We had uh, everybody analyze data sources in order to articulate initial plans for professional learning. And of course, one of our goals is always to make sure that everyone connects and is challenged um, by and with their colleagues. We had 46 teacher leaders attend leadership workshop, 18 coaches and 57 administrators. It was the first time we ever did this in the new high school building um, down in the cafeteria area. And it was absolutely gorgeous and we have plenty of room to spread out. We've been sort of stacked on top of each other in the Gibbs Black Box Theater, which is a gorgeous space, but doesn't hold 130 people super well. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic to have the high school space to hold this set of workshops this year, and we'll be back in that space um, moving forward. 
So that was August Leadership Workshop. Uh, what you see in the picture in the background is um, <coughs> our share out sessions. So every school brought about a two pager of a strategy and they identified a strategy that had worked for students that they had some evidence had worked really well for students the previous year. And it had to be really specific. Um, and they brought that and talked about it at their table in the first day and sort of refined what is that strategy, what was it about this strategy that worked really well for our students and how do we know it worked well. The next day, um, they sort of looked at a menu of different strategies from different schools. So after they, on the first day, dug into some data and tried to identify what do our students need from us based on what we're seeing on this data dashboard, which I'm going to be telling you more about in the next several weeks. Uh, we now have a one-stop shop where people can go to see the academic um, attendance and other types of data uh, about their students, and that's being built out right now by Mr. Coleman, and we're really excited about it because it automatically feeds. It doesn't rely on people to enter data. Um, it builds from all the platforms that we have and puts it all in one place. So they dug into that and identified areas of need for their students, and from there said, we really want to learn about these two strategies. And then they sent members of their school table out to those um, schools, and they went strategy shopping for strategies that would work for the subgroups um, or the focal groups or the um, work that they wanted to do at their schools. So that was one of the sessions that you're seeing in the picture there where uh, educators went out and found a table that was sharing a strategy they really wanted to learn more about. They then brought all the strategies they had learned about back to their tables and did planning on the second day for a large portion of the day at their tables that will move towards their school improvement plans. <coughs> Um, following all leader workshop was new teacher orientation. We had approximately 50 new staff participate in new teacher orientation and training this year. They spent the week, um, they started out with a session with Dr. Thomas um, and Khalees Warnham, who's been doing professional development with the district, uh, with the cabinet team, with our leadership team, and with leadership workshop groups, and now also with new teacher orientation. Um, and she talked about culturally responsive, culturally sustaining practices for all students um, in all of our focal groups. And they started with that session. And then they learned about our district vision and expectations, um, safety terms and practices that we use here in APS. They went through uh, an example drill of what we would do in an emergency situation. They learned about what all of our terms mean so that they would walk in and know um, if we were to have an emergency situation where we needed to shelter in place, for example, what that would mean and what they would need to do. So we started there. Um, we didn't start there, but we did that on the first day. Uh, they learned about educator evaluation um, and the mentor program and about the strategic plan and how we talk about our students in focal groups. And they also did a, a lot of curriculum planning and new teacher orientation and had time with their directors to dig into the curriculum, ask questions about it, uh, and get ready for their first several days of school as well as to get into their classrooms. New teachers were with us for four days this year with a lot of um, time both to get some of this content, which can be a little overwhelming in those four days, and to ask the questions that they had about it. It's a great group of new educators, and we are so happy that they have joined the team. From there, we were really excited to have our opening day with educators. We have two opening days. Um, the first one, everybody comes together at the high school in the auditorium, and we have some speeches from Mr. Schlichtman and Ms. Keyes uh, and Mr. DiLoretto, the president of the AAA, the Administrators Association, um, and myself. Uh, these are just some pictures of all of the joy that we saw on opening day. Uh, there's a picture there of the Hardy team learning about the Hardy schedule that the scheduling committee had put together over the summer. A few pictures of our educators enjoying breakfast and uh, in the crowd listening to some speeches. It was a high energy day and we had some um, fantastic comments to get us started and inspire us as we head into the new school year. As I said, we really focused on starting from strength, and we have a number of actions listed here that I shared with staff on that first day that are the things that we're planning on focusing on. All of these things are reflected in the goals uh, for the year, and they surround the instructional core, which is the student, the teacher, the content that's happening in the classroom, the goal being for these actions to have a significant impact on student learning. Um, so some of these actions, I'll just highlight a few of them. I won't read the whole slide to you. Um, but I want to highlight a few because I think you'll recognize them and see them reflected in the goals for the year. 
Um, one is that we're bringing back our instructional rounds to make sure that we're in, uh, centering adult learning in the classroom. This is something that we're doing at the school level and at the district level, um, and we're breaking these out into some smaller groups over the course of the year this year. We are implementing committees. This was part of our bargaining agreement with AEA uh, Unit A, and we've expanded school-based time to enable this. So one of the expectations this year is that all teachers contribute on a committee in service to their school that allows for some shared distributed leadership uh, for teachers to contribute to work that they want to see happen that will improve the experience of students uh, in a focal group and all students overall. And so schools are working on getting these committees together and one of the share out strategies was actually how one school had implemented this in the previous year um, at Leadership Workshop. We're planning on some inclusive budgeting processes to make sure we're gathering input from all stakeholders as we engage in the budget process this year. And we're hoping to do some of that very early this year. So hold some sessions with families um, and to work uh, in collaboration with AEA to make sure we're hearing the uh, ideas that teachers have for how we build the budget and make sure those are integrated early uh, and often into our process for thinking about what we might need for FY26. Um, we're going to be developing guidelines for caseloads and program staffing models that will support all students. This was also part of our bargaining agreement with the AEA. Um, that's going to be a major effort this year to gather data, understand how caseloads are uh, shaking out this year in our classrooms, um, look at some of the stipulations we have that go into effect next school year, uh, how those look this year, and see what we might need to adjust as we build the budget in preparation for next year. And like I said, we're working towards easy to access data and routine uh, inquiry cycles to support planning and intervention. The dashboard that we have developed uh, that Mr. Coleman has been working on is going to be a major asset towards that effort. So all actions that are reflected in our goals for this year, but that were shared with staff on opening day. And then there were a few asks in terms of how we go about doing that. Um, some of the things that we're going to focus on in practice, less so content, but more how are we going to go about it, uh, are making sure that when we are challenged, we consider the strengths that are present uh, as opposed to really focusing on what's wrong. We're going to try to focus on what we do well. We want to work on establishing adult learning cultures in all of our schools and departments, uh, making sure we're sharing ideas early and often uh, before they're fully formed, making sure we're inviting voices that maybe disagree to the table and know that those voices have something to contribute to make uh, everything, make the experience for our students better. Uh, we're going to try to bring our problems closer to our work so that we can influence them. So often we'll focus on a problem that's really far away from us. It's in our sphere of concern, but not necessarily our sphere of control or influence. So we want to um, practice bringing that work as close as we can so that we can make an adjustment. Um, we want to practice some humility, interrogate how we're contributing to areas in need of growth and development and take that leap that allows us to um, take risks that will help us grow. So these are some of the calls to action that we had for educators on day one. And then of course, we had our first day of school. And it was absolutely fantastic to see students back in schools again. It has been a very smooth start by all counts. Um, what I've heard from principals is that things have run smoothly. People have understood where they needed to be, what the expectations were to start the year. People have started with a very positive um, attitude towards the work that's ongoing and the things that aren't quite clear. They bring those to us and we do our best to turn around answers as fast as we can or to ask people for feedback or input. I've seen some feedback surveys go out on po new policies already um, and that's been helpful for us to take in and think about how do we want to adjust this. Uh, what you see here is a little bit from the Stratton Playground. They've partnered with Playworks this year and are learning some playground routines. Uh, we also have that partnership at Pierce and at Dallin over the last couple of years, and that's been going wonderfully over for the teachers. They spent a whole day of training with Playworks and are helping to implement some of that. Um, we have some pictures from a couple of our younger classrooms of the students learning some of their daily routines, and uh, after morning circle is the middle uh, picture, and of course, it's great to see backpacks and everything back in the schools once again. So that is uh, our report for the first several days events leading up to the first day of school. We've been in for a week. Um, as I said, things are going pretty smoothly. We've had a couple of bumps in the road, and we're doing our best to address any challenges that come up as they come up. I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions from the committee? 
Seeing none, we'll go to the first reading of the handbooks. Um, Dr. Holman. Okay. I will not um, pull, hold on, stop sharing my screen. We'll not pull those up unless there's a specific page that we want to reference. A couple of changes that I want to note that were significant, particularly for the secondary handbooks. Um, AHS, OMS, and the Gibbs School worked to together over the course of the summer um, and held uh, one session, I believe, with families where they heard some feedback from families who were concerned about how cell phone policies and procedures were being implemented in the schools. Uh, uh, Audison had also done a survey of teachers at the end of the school year about how they would like to think about implementation of some cell phone restrictions in school, what some of the disruptions were that teachers had also experienced in school. And so we took a lot of that feedback. We had some teachers engaged at high school, at the high school also over the course of the summer to look at some revised um, policy language and some revised procedural language. So you will see a new policy in the handbooks pertaining to cell phones. And I also included all the procedural language because as I had noted uh, when I sent the handbooks initially, that policy language is pretty vague. Um, and the, there's, that's purposeful. It's because we want to give people the flexibility to adjust the procedures uh, in response to what we see happening. The procedures are generally similar to what was in place already at Gibbs, though some tweaks were made um, to those as students get a little bit older. There's consistency of that expectation vertically, and that was part of the goal of the work that those groups did. So I included the, um, the sort of procedural information as reference material also so that you could sort of see how is this playing out the um, cell phone policy if uh, in practice, and then I'm happy to get questions and bring them back to the administrators as well. We also had some discussion of the AHS um, absence policy over the course of the summer. We received a lot of feedback from families about how that was implemented and some of the confusing language that they had found in the policy, and so there was some revision of the FAQ there, and then we're gonna take a look also at some of the policy language, and some of the policy language was also revised um, to reflect the intent of some of that policy. If we make changes to the actual days and how they get counted, um, we would have to do that in conversation with the community and teachers as well. So happy to take questions and answer them as I'm able or go get answers and bring them back to the committee. Questions, comments from the committee? Dr. Allison Ampey. Unfortunately, I had my notes on my other device, which I didn't bring, so I don't have it, but. That's I'm okay, this is first reading. <laughs> wondering, where do we send comments and stuff to you or? Um, yeah, I think probably to me is easiest. Okay. At this point. Because um, I felt, especially in the elementary school handbook, there were a number of places where it could reach out more to families. Mm -hmm. uh, then it, it kind of explains, this is what we do but it doesn't do the extra step of, and you can do X or you can, it, sure. it just, there's a number of places where it could do that. Okay. Um, and then the other question is how much consistency should we expect across the handbooks because it felt like it wasn't. Formatting wise and order of, of content or yeah, con some content of, con of content? Both. Okay. We're working on that. Okay. Um, one of the things that our process shifted this year, we did have one person who did a thorough comb through with our legal counsel of each of these and did a lot of flagging of those inconsistencies as she went through it. We were able to resolve some of them, certainly not all of them. Um, a couple areas like uh, on the dress code, for example, or dress language, that's some, been something that's been content inconsistent over time, we worked to get that content mm -hmm. consistent. Um, front matter has been content consistent over time. We worked to get some of that, like the vision mission language at the front, mm -hmm. uh, more consistent cell phone policy we were working on making sure it was consistent. Some of the other things are not yet. So this year, the goal is to start working on these in February, get the formatting consistent, and then make sure the content is in a similar order through all of them and that content is vertically aligned. Um, it might be different at, middle, at elementary than it is at middle high. So if there are areas where that's particularly standing out, either on the formatting, I think we could probably note that and adjust it. 
uh, but particularly when it comes to content, be helpful to know where that is, where you're finding that. Okay. Um, I can certainly send what I find to you, but also for the next go round. So these ones have already been distributed. And, and I think that's great because in the past we've been out of compliance in terms of d this is how we disseminate our disciplinary uh, policy and stuff to families. And so we need to have that on day one. Yeah. But <coughs> we, the school committee, should also be having a discussion or, or you know, we, we should be able to say something before they go out. Yes. And so mm -hmm. if I would hope that this next go round, if it's done in February, that it'll be looped through us also. Yes, it'll be voted before the end of this school year for next school year. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? I, I'd just like to note that I appreciated the language change on the attendance policy of the high school. Uh, but regarding class absence versus all day absence when a student is away on a field trip, uh, it, it's my hope that we have clarity or at least a commitment uh, before us for specific language that states that a student on a school sponsored field trip is present with a an Arlington educator is marked present for the day. I understand that it's different from marking attendance for classes, but I think it's essential to make sure that, that it is explicitly noted that they are present for the day and under our care. Any other comments before we go into the next agenda item? Because this is something we need to approve and we'll do this uh, at the next meeting. Mr. Cardin. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put Julie on the spot. Um, it's only been a, a few days, but um, are you able to comment on the new cell phone policy at all? It's the same cell phone policy we had last year. Okay. <laughs> if we see it, we take it. It's, it hasn't changed. And I, I, have, I haven't seen a phone, mm -hmm. if that makes mm -hmm. any difference. Mm -hmm. So Great. The one addition we have is um, we added smart watches because we have an awful lot of kids that we never see a phone, but we see this an awful lot. Mm -hmm. For example, when the, um, the shell casings were found at Gibbs last year, the kids sitting in my seventh grade classroom at Audison knew about it before I did mm -hmm. because they, they were in a group <clears throat> chat with kids at Gibbs. Hmm. Yeah. So saying no smart watches, a lot of teachers were saying that, but just having that as a standard has been really, that, that I think will be helpful. Great. Thank you. Anything else? To that question for Mr. Carden, um, the high school had a discussion about this and filled out a feedback form. Um, and the, it's a pretty new uh, sort of approach at the high school. The rule at the high school is it cannot be on your person. Um, so uh, about half of the teachers responding have sort of a mechanism for putting it in a um, like a shoe holder on the front of, at the front of the room where it can be easily monitored or it's in your backpack the backpack goes to the back of the room like in a separate space um, the teachers feedback on that approach was e exceptionally optimistic in the survey that they did uh, very positive it's going well and also cautiously optimistic teachers saying okay let's let's keep being consistent I think a big one of the bigger changes at Audison too is this consistency. Like we're going to be, we're going to consistently everybody say this is the plan, and we're going to work on implementing it. And the administration is going to be behind making sure that there's follow up and follow through, if that something happens that's positive and proactive with the kids, um, but is making sure that we're all clear about what the expectation is. And that seems to be going over well. It has only been a week, so I'm sure we'll find snags, but it's been positive. Okay, any other questions? Ah, uh, Ms. Morgan. Just on the cell phone thing, can we also poll the kids and ask them what it looks like in their yeah. classrooms? Because yeah. um, that uh, your report is not what I hear at my house, but yeah. that's <laughs> fine, right? Um, but I think we get into, it becomes challenging when there are changes and there are um, perhaps people report being really on board with it uh, in a survey, but then the implementation in the classroom maybe isn't the same, and then that, kind of creates like a, a sort of frictional situation where there's not consistency period to period and it makes it harder for it makes it harder for everybody to know what the expectations are. So I think if we get a sense, I think uh, in an anonymous survey, the kids will tell you exactly, you know, where and when they can have their devices and the messaging that they've received. And then um, that'll help everybody feel comfortable, you know, 
doing what they need to do in their classrooms. Yep. We will do that. Anything else? Seeing none, next item of business is discussion of timing of superintendent evaluation materials, Dr. Homan. Um, I think that's, I, I don't have input. <laughs> okay. Tell me when you'd like my materials. Well, then we'll leave this to the discussion of the committee. When would we like to have the superintendent's evaluation materials? Um, when are we? Yes, Mr. So Thielman. When are we doing the evaluation in public? Um, I can tell you that. Yeah, we'll, it's we'll, on. So it's on right now. Mm -hmm. And this is probably just a copy from last year. Mm -hmm. um, it's on for November 14th yeah. as the evaluation date, uh, evaluation materials to the committee on at the end of October the 24th, which is the meeting after the outcomes report. That will, I think that works fine. The same, the same, okay. the same mm -hmm. timeline we had last year. It's after the outcomes report, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ms. Morgan. I, yeah, I, I'll, what I wanted, and I think I said this when we wrote the goals, was I want to make sure that that we get the the um, the objective, like qu you know, quantitative pieces of the evaluate. Like there were certain goals that was like we're going to do X by X percent or whatever. Mm -hmm. I instead of having to like do all that math myself, given what's there, I was hoping that we could sort of get those. The, the objective pieces of the goals, we could get those spelled out for us, ideally. Yeah. Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, the other thing, that I see the reasoning for doing it the 24th. My only concern is if there's any questions or anything that comes up, then there isn't a public meeting for us to, I mean, we can send her questions Mm -hmm. But then she'd have to send to the committee, and is that doing an open meeting law violation, or is that just? Do, do you see what I'm saying? If okay, if an individual member sends her a question, <clears throat> and she amends her posting, which is a publicly posted document, as a result that would not violate the open meeting law. But if there was some sort of a conversation back and forth that included other members of the committee, that would create uh, a deliberation issue. No, I'm talking about the first, hmm. but I'm so, talking so about if, the if, first. So if you said hypothetically, can you add XXX to, the, uh, to, the, to your uh, report? And she did that, that's perfectly fine. That, because okay. there's been no deliberation with another school committee member. The issue becomes if this results in her either deliberating with another committee member, should I do this or not, or some other discussion so that other committee members are aware of the discussion and engaged in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for clarification of an item that you see in the report, it is perfectly fine to ask for clarification and it is perfectly fine for the superintendent to post whatever cl clarification she sees fit. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Any other comments or questions regarding the uh, uh, evaluation materials? Seeing them, we'll go on to the next item, uh, agenda item, which should be discussion. Do we need uh, go ahead. Make a motion. Would, would you like? Uh, would you like to make a motion then? Um, yeah, I move that the uh, evaluation materials, including calculations, mm -hmm. um, be available, be provided to the committee by October twenty fourth, twenty twenty four. Okay, motion by Dr. Allison Ampey, second by Ms. Morgan. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Ms. Exton, uh, who has dropped off. Mr. Cardin. Yes. Dr. Allison Ampey. Yes. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Gittleson. Yes. <coughs> Ms. Morgan. Yes. 
The chair votes in the affirmative. That's a six nothing vote. I note for the record that uh, uh, Ms. Exton is taking a course, which means that she's dropping in and out of this meeting. So uh, uh, we wish her well on her coursework. 6 0 affirmative vote. Now we will go forward to the next agenda item discussion and possible vote to change or move meeting dates. Um, we are scheduled to meet on June 5th. Uh, as we did last June, we advanced the meeting one date to a Wednesday, June, uh, which would, uh, would mean that this year we'd move it to June 4th in order not to conflict with the lab graduation. Uh, June 19th is a holiday. Uh, happy Juneteenth. So the proposal would be to move the meeting to June 18th. Again, that would mean we'd have two Wednesday meetings in June. And I want to raise the topic of the organizational meeting. Uh, I would propose, I will be out of the country on the date of the organizational meetings presently uh, uh, structured. Uh, I would propose that we hold the organizational meeting on Monday, the day after, uh, uh, the Monday, which would be two days after the election, invite the clerk to come by to swear in our members in public and not only have the organizational meeting, but also have a, have a cake. And <laughs> I, I mean, I want to, I, I think that it's a nice thing to celebrate the start of our school committee year. The election of Miss Morgan is chair and, and uh, make it a nice event. Um, so we would not meet on the 10th that week? We'd meet on the no, we, we'd, meet, we'd, meet, we'd have our normal meeting on the 10th, but this would just be a, a strictly a half an hour meeting, organizational, then a little celebration. Okay. Bring the family. And, and I wanted to uh, uh, ask you guys before I went and asked the clerk if she can go along with the program. So uh, yes, Ms. Morgan. So this, the meeting on the 19th was already moved to the 17th. At least it's on the APS calendar on, like, it's on, on the, the 17th. 17th. So it's on my calendar. It's on the Arlington Public Schools calendar for the 17th. Oh, so for I think the 17th of Tuesday? <laughs> I think we're good with that one. I had it on the 17th, yeah. Okay. So that's good. Okay. Um, then we don't have to do that one. Yep. Yeah. And the June, 4, uh, June 5th of June 4th, we'd be moving that one. Correct. If anybody has an opinion regarding the organizational meeting, please send me an email and you need if to vote I, for the organizational meeting hmm? you want to do that now or I, I I'd want to ask the clerk first before, uh, oh. before we vote that but I just wanted to, before I even went there I wanted to make sure it was okay with the committee yes yeah, so June 17th is on the calendar we're keeping that right yeah all right June mm -hmm. I have a conflict on the fourth but there'll be a quorum so don't worry about it mm -hmm. we can so I you want to move to move the fifth to the fourth if you like Second. I move that we move the fifth to the June 5th meeting to June 4th Motion by Mr. Steelman, second by second. Uh, Ms. Morgan. Um, any discussion? Seeing none. Um, Mr. Cardin? Yes. Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Uh, Ms. Gittleson? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. Chair votes in the affirmative. That meeting is hereby moved from uh, June 5th to June 4th. <clears throat> Next up, election of MASC delegate for the delegate assembly. Is anyone else planning on going to the delegate uh, to the conference? I think I might. I okay. Have to check. Mm -hmm. uh, we are asked to provide a delegate and an alternate. It's going to be a long meeting, so we might want to play tag team if you're there. Um, so I would entertain a motion uh, in whatever order. Um, for myself, I will be attending, and Dr. Allison Ampey, who will, who may attend. So I guess the motion would be, uh, if you would, to designate me as the delegate and Dr. Allison Ampey as the alternate. So moved. Second. Motion by Dr. Allison Ampey, second by Ms. Morgan. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Cardin? Yes. Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Ms. Gittleson? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. And the chair votes in the affirmative. That's a six nothing vote. Superintendent's update. So as I shared uh, in the opening events report, we are celebrating a relatively smooth start to the new school year. 
um, and we're partially doing that with our back to school nights. Uh, this year we have a flyer that's gone out to families and we've also shared this in a couple of different updates to families as we start the school year. Um, what all of our back to school nights will be this school year. We're talking a lot at the elementary schools about the new curriculum um, and we hope families will come and enjoy some time. Our Welcome Center will have <coughs> tables at all of the back to school nights and um, we'll be there to support families with any questions that they have about how to navigate the district or any of the other resources available in town, connect families to resources uh, if they need that additional support. I also want to share some gratitude both for our Welcome Center team who has been hard at work enrolling a lot of new families to the district. We had a lot of um, enrollments late in the summer this school year and folks coming to visit the Welcome Center um, for Thursdays and Fridays in particular were quite busy um, up here and so it's been wonderful to meet families here and to support them in getting registered and getting to know Arlington a little bit. Uh, we did have a large donation from Hope Worldwide Massachusetts who coordinated a large donation of backpacks, school supplies, uh, personal care essentials that students might need and the Welcome Center team passed a lot of that along to schools based on need articulated by principals as well as to sort of have available in case a student came in and needed some additional um, supplies or gear. The Welcome Center team, like I said, will uh, be making sure that they're at back to school nights and uh, hearing what families might need, connecting with folks who need some additional support. They've been connecting also with families who might need some support uh, getting transportation or finding the right placement um, that's going to make sure that their student can be present and able to participate in school. So it's been a, a great opportunity to meet families at the start of the school year and we have enjoyed having the Welcome Center as part of our suite of services up here at the superintendent's office and central office. I want to say a special thank you to a lot of our different departments whose work um, does, isn't always uh, immediately visible or appreciated. Our custodial maintenance, food service, and transportation teams play an integral part in getting us ready for the new school year, making sure everything that is needed for repairs, um, for cleaning, for the classrooms to be ready for our students. There's a lot of moving of furniture that goes on during the summer so that everything can be ready for students and set up for them. Um, so thank you to all of you for your hard work over the summer to prepare our buildings for the new school year, as well as to our central office leadership and administrative assistants, our human resources team for getting everybody hired up and making sure that everybody got that first paycheck which was an exciting one this school year because of all of our pay increases. Um, I want to thank our families for partnering with us to reinforce expectations and get everybody into the swing of new routines at the start of the year. It's a transition that can be really difficult for some of our kids and some of our families and it's uh, really we're really grateful for everybody reading all of the stuff we are sending home um, and helping us uh, answer any questions that they might have and gratitude to our staff for the all hands on deck approach we've had to the new school year. Uh, re everybody really has been chipping in everywhere. Our district leaders have been all over the district over the last several days uh, making sure that if anybody needs anything they're there to support. So we've had a very supportive, patient and enthusiastic uh, staff from our very first day with them and that's been fantastic. A uh, few fall sports updates for you. Our boys and girls soccer teams are off to a winning start and are doing great. Uh, we have a football game versus Brookline High School tomorrow at Pierce Field and the football team's doing great as well. Our cross country teams at Arlington High and OMS are running circles around everybody, mm -hmm. quite literally. And our girls volleyball and all other teams are working really hard and having great seasons as well. Have more updates as we move through the fall season. And I want to draw your attention to enrollments, which are also in your materials. We updated those uh, this evening after we got some numbers back from our programmatic uh, areas. And I want to highlight that we do have the Gibbs SLC enrollments broken out by the different programs that we now have operating there. That is new this year um, due to uh, some really significant efforts by our middle school special education teams and building leadership. And we also have uh, enrollments, this isn't reflected in the enrollment report, um, but we have some new students uh, from the METCO program uh, also attending at Dallin this year. That program has not been there for a little while, uh, but they're very excited to welcome some of our students who travel in from Boston uh, at that school this school year as well. So all the program enrollments are now also included in the enrollment statistics. And I am happy to answer any questions. Questions from the committee? Mr. Garden. Um, so the, I, I haven't been tracking it in the last few years, but the 
but I do know that the Metco enrollment used to be around 80. Mm -hmm. Has it been slowly declining, or is this more of a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um, and that is sort of statewide, is my understanding, that there's uh, some... They've changed the enrollment approach as well. I'm happy to have Ms. Smith here to sort of talk about some of the changes Metco has made to enrollment. We have been requesting information Um, And we have been requesting enrollments, and we've been trying to get that number up over the last many weeks. Um, And it it can be a slow process. We also have uh, engaged in enrolling older siblings because sometimes that's a hang-up for families. Like they want their kindergartner to go, but the kindergartner has a sixth grade student also in the family and a ninth grader. So that's a little tricky right now because we certainly can't, we don't have any more room left in sixth grade. Um, And so it's all space-based. So... It's, it, it is a trend, and it's one we're trying to reverse, and Ms. Smith is very much on top of it. We've requested a lot of packets, and sometimes getting the enrollment process can be a little bit slow, but she, we do have some new folks who've been enrolling even the, during this past week. Thanks. Dr. Allison Ampey. So I haven't pulled up um, the long-range plan, but I didn't think we were supposed to grow, and certainly not by as much as we seem to house consistent do we I mean how solid do we think these current numbers are you mean the bottom line yeah the numbers yeah um so year to year around so the trend that I have most commonly noticed in that bottom line bottom right number on the report is that around now um it's a little higher than it will be when we hit October 1 and that right around the start of the school year, it actually typically drops, but this year it's up. So we did have a lot of late enrollments, and we do still have enrollments that are coming in. <coughs> I'm optimistic that that is a very accurate number. Um, and, but, and I will check with our data team to make sure that what we're seeing in Power School looks like an accurate reflection of the enrollment at the schools because we do always have that October report and then once we resolve errors in the October report Mm -hmm. we see a dip in the numbers because maybe a couple students were in there double by accident for some reason so um, around this time I'll typically ask the data team to double check it and see if we see any shifts but we have had a number of move-ins towards the end of the year and we did not have a lot of students who sort of registered and then didn't show up so these track with what the principals are seeing in the schools okay very closely miss morgan do we really have 101 kids at the preschool Mm -hmm. well that's a lot for right now yes it is we've got another room we've added a room we have another classroom thank you that's what i did but yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) anyone else on this item seeing none um consent agenda all items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion there will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence warrant 24326 from june 26th seven hundred eighty two thousand five hundred sixteen dollars and eighty five cents warrant two four three four three June 28th, $4,213,392.97. Warrant 24341 from June 30th, $798,804.73. Warrant 25020 from July 23rd, $248,064.10. Warrant 25035, August 13th, Four hundred twenty-four, four hundred twenty-nine thousand five hundred thirty-six dollars and ninety cents. Warrant two five zero four four, August twenty, uh, July twenty, uh, August twenty-seventh, one million eighty-two thousand seven hundred ninety-six dollars and forty-seven cents. Warrant two five zero six three from September eleventh, seven hundred seventy thousand dollars. $286.82, as well as dra- school committee meeting minutes for the June 20th meeting and school committee meeting minutes for the special meeting held on July 25th, 2024. Motion to approve the consent agenda by 
Moved. Dr. Allison Appy, seconded by Mr. Seelman. Second. Uh, <clears throat> roll call, uh, Mr. Cardin. Yes. Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Ms. Gittleson? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. Chair votes the affirmative. That's a 6 nothing vote. The consent agenda is approved. Uh, first read for file FF-E, Procedures for Naming New Spaces at Arlington High School. Mr. Thielman. So um, <clears throat> the naming committee uh, got started in June, uh, with members of the naming committee were finalized in June, students and community members, and then the committee uh, had its first meeting in August, and so we're not able to meet the September 30th or end of September 24 deadline to um, select names for the seven rooms identified in that, uh, in that policy, and the members of the committee, the naming committee, want to do a broad uh, search. They, uh, the committee has voted to um, reach out to multiple groups in the community to get names of uh, people who should be recognized in the school, and we want to be more thoughtful about the process. So therefore, I'm asking the committee to uh, extend the time to the end of, to June 1st, 2025, with an interim report on the end of February 2025. And maybe at the interim report, we'll have some names we don't know, but we want to be less pressured. Okay, so the committee basically has three choices. They can refer to the policy subcommittee, they can do nothing tonight except this is a first read and vote it at our next meeting, or we can entertain a motion to suspend the rules to consider this request tonight. My preference would be to suspend the rules. Uh, if you're making a motion. Second. Oh. Mr. I, I, preference <laughs> slash motion. Okay, motion by Mr. Thielman, second by Ms. Morgan to spend the rules so we can consider the, this policy revision. Requires a two-thirds vote. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call Mr. Cardin. Yes. Dr. Allison Ampey. Yes. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Uh, Ms. Gittleson. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. Chair votes in the affirmative. A six nothing unanimous vote. The rules are suspended. Mr. Thielman, will you have a motion? I do. I do. Um, so I, I move that we um, amend the policy. Uh, where is that? As presented. As presented. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, motion by Mr. Thielman. Second by? Second. Uh, Ms. Gittleson. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Mr. Cardin? Yes. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Ms. Gittleson? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. And the chair votes the affirmative six nothing. That is unanimous. The policy is amended. Subcommittee liaison reports and announcements. Budget. Budget will be scheduling a meeting very soon. Um, we have a number of items to put on our agendas going forward. Mm -hmm. If anyone has any thoughts on what the, what else we should add, please send them to me. Community relations. Uh, Ms. Exton is not with us right now. Is there anybody else who's a member of that subcommittee who has anything to add? I, I know that Ms. Diggins sent, we're in, scheduling, in the process of scheduling our first meeting <coughs> sometime over the next couple of weeks. Thank you. CIAA, Ms. Morgan. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled on October 7th. We don't currently have an agenda for that meeting. So uh, we will, we will uh, be able to report to you on the 26th with either an agenda or we will uh, not have that meeting and we will definitely meet in November. Okay. We will at Which the very fun. least we'll be doing outcomes because we'll have oh, some we're gonna preliminary do that in October, outcomes for sure. in October. So yeah. on our agenda for the <laughs> October 7th meeting. <laughs> Sorry to tell you that right now. <laughs> totally, absolutely fine. Will be outcomes. Yes. And if there are any other additions, we'll let you all know on the 26th. <laughs> okay. Facilities, Mr. Thielman. No report. Uh, policies and procedures, Mr. Cardin. Uh, we do not have a meeting scheduled. Uh, our first meeting will hopefully be in October. Okay. Arlington High School Building Committee, Mr. Thielman. We are moving along. Uh, the project is moving along, and uh, if you go on the website, you can see a lot of new information about the progress being made. We are on schedule to uh, open the gym and complete the gym and open it after February break. Excellent. I see some blinking lights over on Mill Street. Percy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are lights on Mill Street. <laughs> um, there, 
going to be in a test phase for I think the next week and then they're going to start going into effect for school entrance and exit times um, but there's a lot of discussion between there's there's interaction between the schools and the police department mm -hmm. around getting them up to speed yeah I mean it's going to become more critical after February and when we uh or actually after phase four when we complete the roadway so that Millbrook Drive will connect to Schuler Court and that will be the preferred method for pickup and drop off. So we'll be seeing a lot more traffic coming through there at the completion of the project, which is the reason for the new signal. Right. Yeah, I may just add that there's a, there's conversations that are take that had prior to well, several years ago there were there were conversations about trying to alleviate the, the traffic pressure in the morning by allowing people to enter through Grove Street, mm -hmm. uh, so faculty and staff. Not, and so uh, um, we'll see where those conversations take us. That might help. Okay. Uh, liaison reports, announcements, or future agenda items? Seeing none, we have an executive session. I'm looking for a motion to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel to discuss strategy with respect for collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or lit litigation policy, uh, position of the public body. The chair so declares this to be the case. Uh, discussion on triple A negotiations. Motion by to enter executive session for those purposes by me. Ms. Morgan, second by Dr. Allison Ampey. Mr. Cardin. Yes. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. Yes. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Ms. Gittleson. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. Chair votes in the affirmative. We are entering executive session and we will not be returning to public session. Thank you. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.